Hello everyone, we are going to continue with um, 2019's level 1 science um, genetics variation exam and we are going to look at question 2 today. Um, so this is a um, very short um, question again. Um, this is your typical pedigree chart type of question um, except this is only one generation, uh, two generations with four offsprings and two parents. So very, very straightforward. So make sure you read the question properly. So we got cystic fibrosis, um, can trace through the family as you can see in the um, pedigree chart. The cystic fibrosis allele, which is a small T, is recessive, and then a normal person has capital T. So straight away when you look at, and this is the thing when I do these type of question, uh, when I teach this to my class, I don't even read the question. I normally just try to solve all of the genotypes of every single individual on um, the pedigree chart because if you can do that the rest of the questions is a walk in the park so let's have a look at this so this is unaffected so that means what is unaffected unaffected means capital T capital T means if someone is being unaffected they can have two possibilities they can have homozygous dominant so two capital T's or heterozygous a big T and a small T why because the big T is a dominant trait and that has to be displayed. So you can have both being capital T's, but then you can have a hidden small t, which cannot be expressed due to the presence of the dominant allele. So that means this male has to have a big T, this female has to have the big T, we don't know about the other one. This number three has to have a big T, this number six has to have, has to have a um, big T. But we don't know what the other thing is, so we just leave it for now. But if we look at number four, number five, they are both affected and then we know the affected allele is recessive so that means this must be small t small t this must be small t small t and that leads us to believe that we can confirm that number one must be heterozygous big t small t big t small t why how on earth is small t small t going to be passed on to number four number five um, if either parent is homozygous dominant that's just impossible so it's only possible remember we inherit one um, allele from each parent so number four number five is possible because number four inherited the small t from parent number one and then inherited the small t from parent number two and then combine to give you small t small t okay so this is when we can draw the Punnett square so for number three and number six we actually don't know we can't decide we because it can either be big t small t or big t big t and um, we can show this by doing the Punnett square so let's look at individual one individual two so this is heterozygous this is heterozygous so this is big t small t this is big t small t and when we do Punnett square you just cross multiply this is t big t small t this is small t big t this is big t small t and this is homozygous recessive small t small t so how why can we not determine these two because it could be either this one this one or that one we don't know what it is because they all look the same they have the same phenotype they don't have stiff fibrosis so we don't know what they have okay so work out the genotype of the following individual so we already done that um, so this is what I meant if you do the question like um, like I demonstrated here, the rest is really straightforward. Explain any differences in the expected phenotype of the offspring ratio compared to the actual phenotype. Okay, so let's look at the actual ratio. So the actual ratio, sorry, let's look at the theoretical ratio first. The theoretical ratio, if we look at the phenotype ratio, is three to one. Okay, so you have four individuals here. You have three, so the ones that are being highlighted that's normal, that's normal, that's normal. So you have three normal out of four to one affected. One person is affected out. In theoretically, one out of four is affected by cystic fibrosis. But what is the actual phenotype ratio? The actual phenotype ratio, you come back to the group in the chart. You can see there are four individuals here and then two of them are affected, two of them are normal. So the ratio, the actual ratio is either is two to two by two or is one to one two to two or one to one so and why is expected ratio different okay why should they you know why isn't the actual ratio 
the same as what we predicted using the Punnett square. So you have to understand, I mean, I can show you the answers in a bit, but like I always said, you're not here to look at the answers, you're here to understand why, um, to, to hear me out in terms of the explanation. This is, the Punnett square is only a theoretical prediction. It's kind of like, I always use this example of flipping, flipping a coin. So if you flip a coin, and I will ask you, is it impossible to, to get heads 10 out of 10? Like every time I get heads, is that impossible? Of course, that's not impossible. It's just unlikely because the first time of flipping it will be 50%. The next time flipping it will be 50%. The next time flipping it will be 50%. If you do statistics, you understand, you know, this is a, you know, probability. So the probability will that times like that times like that keep going. So the number will get smaller and smaller and smaller. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Like say, for example, the probability of winning lottery, um, winning the lottery is actually really, 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 really small but then people still win lottery because it's not impossible it's just extremely unlikely so this is the expected ratio so it just means you know in in theory out of four three should be normal but then the actual phenotype every um, we had two that are normal two that are affected because it just means for the first child when the first child was born that ch that child has three out of four so that's 75 percent chance three out of four, 25 percent chance. So that means the first child that was born, 75 percent chance being normal, 25 percent chance having cystic fibrosis. And then the next person, the next child that's born would have the same probability, 75, 20, 25, it's like flipping the coin. The probability is the same for each child. Uh, for each child. It doesn't mean that the first child is normal, the second child must be affected because it's an individual event. Each fertilization is an individual event. Okay, so now let's have a look at the answers here. So um, don't worry about the things in the bracket. So the expected ratio is three to one, uh, two to two, or one to one, because they have more cystic fibrosis than expected. Because each individual offspring is a product of random fertilization, and each fertilization is independent from each offspring. So it's like saying if you had a boy, if the family had a boy as a first child, does that mean the second child must be a girl? No, because every single child, the fertilization event is independent from each other. It just means the in the pre previous child has nothing to do with the next one because it's um, another sexual reproduction another whole process of fertilization is random is not a set rule okay since the both heterozygous um, each individual um, has 50 percent chance inheriting the, the either leaf from each parent so what it means you can get a small t because it's big T, small T, so what that line is saying, there's 50% chance getting this, there's 50% chance getting this, it's um, not a really nice way to phrase it, um, but you can just, the highlighted part is the important bit. Now, if this, again, this is not gonna happen, but if this family can have a lot of children with a large number of offspring, then the ratio will be very close to three to one. And this is predominantly evident in vegetables because vegetables can reproduce very quickly in a very short amount of time. We can actually prove the theoretical probability because if you have like say tens of thousands of offsprings the ratio will be very close to what we expect it to be if you just have like two or three offsprings then it's very likely that it's going to be different to the theoretical ratio because you can have that small chance of just you know getting the um, what seems to be the impossible outcome but it's not impossible it's just unlikely Okay, um, I believe that's the end of this particular question. Now, just make sure that you understand um, just one thing. Um, again, I just want to elaborate um, on this part because normally with a pedigree chart, what follows on is a um, test, cross, test cross question. Now, this is not asked in this particular exam, I don't believe. Just remember what is test cross. Test cross, if, uh, if you have someone that's like, say, if let's use the same example, if have someone that's um, um, homozygous dominant, and or heterozygous and then we can't tell them apart okay we don't know because they look exactly the same how can we prove that um, how can we determine their phen uh, genotype is by if you cross them test cross you cross them with the heterozy uh, with the homozygous recessive because this person will look different to that okay so this individual will look different to that and that so this we know 
this one has the homozygote uh, has a recessive trait so if you do the Punnett square of the that one and that one you can see that it's a hundred percent big t small t so all of the children will be normal but if you across the uh, heterozygous one with the small t small t's can you see there is a 50 percent chance of getting of getting the affected cystic fibrosis syndrome in in these individuals so as soon as you get one individual showing the homozygous recessive or showing the recessive trait that means the individual must be big t small t and if you have like say have numerous children or numerous offsprings and they are all normal then it's very likely that the the other parent is homozygous dominant but then you need a large enough sample size to prove this but i just want to mention this because this type of question normally follows up with the pedigree chart uh, make sure you revise that as well okay now hopefully this video has been helpful and like always smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys next time bye bye